This is Kalpak Shah. He works for DDN. Uh, his talk is going to be about a Luster Log Analyzer, community-centric effort to improve Luster Log Analysis. God knows we need improved Luster Log Analysis. Kalpak Shah. Hey. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Yeah, so thanks, Andrew, for setting up this talk, right? I mean, so there was a lot of talk about Splunk and about how to monitor logs, how to create alerts. Uh, on top of logs and how to manage uh, hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes of logs, right? So uh, this talk pertains to that. Yeah, so essentially, why do we need to analyze lusher logs, right? I mean, today a developer uh, needs to write his own scripts to parse the debug logs within lusher because, you know, as they are, they are extremely tough to use, tough to understand. Um, very few people know how to effectively use these logs today, right? You know, only the very, very senior engineers or those who have worked with at least a year on Lusher would be able to effectively use these logs, right? Everybody else just kind of randomly grabs it when required. Um, the other problem is there is no structured approach, right? I mean, <coughs> a long time ago there was LL Analyze, but other than that, there is no real structured approach uh, to try and use these logs for something better. Okay, uh, event correlation between multiple clients and you know multiple Lusher servers is is a very tough problem, right? I mean, you will have to open like five shell uh, windows and grep within all of those and try and correlate RPCs across multiple windows and keeping track of that, understanding that becomes tough, especially for <coughs> developers who are just starting with Lusher. Right. Uh, again, tracing capabilities. Right. I mean, how do you automatically trace uh, specific RPCs across a bunch of servers? Then, how to create event notifications? Right. So, let's say I'm doing development and I just want, you know, like some problem reproduces every half an hour. Right. And all I want is automatically I get a pop-up or I get an email when a certain log entry is seen in the logs across any of my OSSs. Right. So, how can I set that up? without having to, again, you know, write my own grep uh, or my own Python scripts to uh, do this myself. And how do we simplify the high level of expertise that's needed today to parse these logs, right? Again, the senior engineers will do it very, very easily, but I have seen, you know, like junior engineers struggle with it for a while and eventually not use logs for a very long amount of time, you know, before they understand the system much better. And lastly, in some cases we have had uh, where, you know, customers have sent across their logs and the logs are like in gigabytes, right? So it's extremely tough to uh, quickly analyze those, figure out which are the sections of those logs that are very, very relevant or not. So, yeah, so who kind of requires log analysis, right? So one is, of course, developers, right? So essentially, uh, this talk is primarily around developers. Uh, where you know developers want to quickly be able to leverage these logs for their debugging requirements. Other is support, right? I mean, uh, let's say L2 support or L1 support even you know gets logs if it's easily able to identify uh, the crash-related lines or the warnings or something suspicious, right? I think there are about 10 or 15 uh, log lines that everybody kind of knows, right? With every release, there is like four or five top defects that a lot of customer sites hit. And then each time uh, the L2 engineer does the same steps, right? Uh, escalated to engineering, and then engineering says, "Okay, we have hit this at four other places. This is the log to log line to look for, right?" So it could potentially be automated and simplified. Um, <coughs> and administrators, right? I mean, in some scenarios, you know, you could have a, a lab or a site where you have the log analyzer in place and it's able to look at logs on certain OSSs, certain MDSs or certain clients and then automatically notify when a certain log line is seen or certain correlated log lines are seen, right? So uh, an open happens, a lock happens and then you see a an, an, uh, crash or you see a warning. So how do you kind of identify this on the fly without having to keep grepping it, keep looking at it all the time? So, what are the options to do this today? So, for developers, there was LL Analyze. It's a script within Lusher Utils. Uh, it's a Perl script with which you can indent and color code your logs or you can extract uh, logs of a specific subsystem. And you can even kind of highlight some RPC patterns. But it's not scalable. Uh, it only helps you to, you know, uh, 
just grep it, grep things better, right? It's nothing more than grepping things better. For event correlation, uh, we have seen that you know some sites use SEC, the simple uh, simple event correlator. But again, it's purely an event correlation tool. It's it's not really a analysis tool. It's not really a log search tool, right? And neither does it have any great GUI. And Splunk, I think it's picking up in the HPC industry, right? So Splunk is, of course, uh, a very nice software, but it's paid, it's commercial, right? But using Splunk, you can collect all your logs. All your logs are indexed, they're stored. Uh, you can graph stuff from your logs. You can uh, do as much, uh, lots of complicated event correlation, so on and so forth. But the point is it's paid, right? Not many developers or smaller sites may not be able to afford it, would not be you know, ready to pay for it. Uh, so is there a open source solution that you can put together that does something like you know maybe 75 percent 80 percent of what Splunk does for you so what are we looking for in a log analyzer right so essentially you're looking for toggling subsystems right so let's say a developer is working on the MDS related code then he's interested in uh, the MDS MDC uh, you know specific subsystem related logs he's not interested in uh, OSS logs for example he's not interested in uh, portals or, or LNet related logs right he's focusing on the metadata related logs so the ability to quickly toggle these subsystems um, how to get the relevant log lines from various servers on a single view, you know, uh, sorted by a timestamp, so that you see that, okay, this procedure, this uh, line happened on uh, server 1, then this happened on server 2, and then this on server 3, and this is the flow, right? Uh, or if you want to kind of, in a single view, you want to get the uh, two RPCs, uh, logs of two RPCs sorted by timestamp to identify locking issues, for example. Um, or just simply I want to search for a specific string or a specific error or a specific warning across a few gigabytes of logs. Um, or I just want to simply say that, okay, across these five servers, give me the logs for these five minutes during which the customer saw an outage, right, or the customer saw a crash. Uh, or I just want some custom logic, right? And then finally, some sort of email alerts based on certain conditions. I think those at a high level are the requirements. So <clears throat> this could be put together using some of the components I'll just talk about and then I have some screenshots of this particular setup. Uh, so what we did is we used Logstash uh, for collecting the logs, okay, and for managing the uh, events for collecting the logs essentially. And so Logstash was able to collect the logs. We wrote a parser for it, so you can write a parser in Ruby. So we essentially uh, converted these logs and you know kind of indicated which column is what. Uh, you can convert the subsystem, which is a hexadecimal number, into the actual uh, string that the subsystem name, so on and so forth. And uh, so Logstash is essentially doing the collection and parsing for you, okay? Uh, and then Logparse can, uh, sorry, Logstash can use, uh, you can just store your logs in CSV if you want, or if you require some sort of a scalable indexing engine in the back end, then you can use Elasticsearch, right? So in our case, we have used Elasticsearch as the back end engine. So Logstash is doing the collection, parsing, and passing it down onto the Elasticsearch indexing engine, okay? And again, Logstash comes with filters, uh, codecs, and it, it can support various output engines. Okay, it also supports Flume, which is another log collection engine. If you know some 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 people are using that. Okay, <coughs> so. Um, yeah, essentially, all you need to do when you configure Logstash is define you know where the input is going to come from. So you can point it to a file, or you can just point it to syslog, right? Uh, you just configure it accordingly. Uh, filters are either Ruby files, with, which will take each log line and uh, parse them, split them, uh, remove certain data, clean the logs, you know, whatever you prefer to do uh, of these sort, you can do it in the filters. And output is where you know just kind of the parsed output can be dumped. Right, so out here, as I said, we are uh, using Elasticsearch. If you want to just dump it in a CSV file or a database, you could do that too. <coughs> yeah, so this is how a simple Logstash configuration will look. Uh, you define, you know, what's the file uh, from which you want to pick up the uh, debug logs. You will define the filter in which you do the write your custom parsing logic. You know, if if you, if you have any custom logic to be implemented, otherwise we have written a basic uh, parser. That, that picks up the basic sort of data uh, from the lesser logs. 
and then in the output we are kind of defining our elastic search host uh, where logstash will automatically dump these uh, parsed log data okay so for those who are not aware of elastic search it's basically an open source distributed real time uh, search and indexing engine okay so it's similar to lucene or solar if if you are aware of that um, <coughs> yeah essentially you can like dump data into it figure out what you want to index uh, it, it it elastic search is pretty scalable you know you can shard it and it can even store hundreds of gigabytes of data if you want it to and if you configure it correctly so essentially why we are using elastic search is primarily for the indexing and secondly for the scalability okay those are the two main reasons now putting it in elastic search is one thing but what we are looking for is a gui right uh, we want a ui based tool with which to uh, analyze our logs and you don't want to again grab stuff within elastic search right uh, so for that there is a nice tool called kibana uh it's it's essentially uh, written by the elastic search guys and it's sort of this particular stack that i'm talking about competes with splunk in the open source world right it's like poor man's splunk um uh, but it's pretty good as as we'll see so kibana is an open source browser in which you can uh, see the analytics of the data that you have in elastic search okay um and you can build it it comes with some basic ui but you can also build your own graphs you can build your own charts uh, you can write your own alerts so on and so forth okay yeah so about uh, email alerts actually uh, so logstash uh, supports conditionals right so i can say in when i configure logstash i can put some uh, email id i can configure an email within it and i can say that okay if you see an error line then email so and so id if you see a warning line then email this id uh, if you see uh, a soft lockup then email this id so i can set up those kind of email alerts within logstash so when logstash is picking up uh, the logs and parsing it if it comes across certain keywords or certain conditionals that you have provided it can email uh, stuff out or you can even hit apis if you know that's what you want okay okay so this is how I mean, this is part of how uh, i wonder if it's readable in the back but yeah so <clears throat> for example at the, at the top i'm like searching for a uh, specific sub subsystem logs right so for example i want to search for a specific subsystem then all i need to say is message dot subsystem colon and the name of the subsystem okay and then <clears throat> it's going to give me the across time how many log lines were seen for that particular subsystem okay i can configure how what's the time period within which i want to see this data okay and below this graph it will give me the actual lines log lines that pertain to that particular subsystem okay um plus i could actually search any text so i could just write you know oss 0 star and then it will give me all the logs that contain oss 0 as the search term right and in the back end it's collecting uh, in the, when we had set this up we had like two mdss uh, four osss uh, about i think eight osts per oss about two mdts per mds <coughs> so it was collecting logs from all of these servers uh, it's configurable how often you want to collect these logs right so on certain servers you might want to collect connect it you know collect it every 100 seconds in some cases you might want to collect it every 10 seconds it's configurable and internally during collection all we are doing is we are doing an lctl uh, debug kernel okay and it picks up all that output dumps it into a file and that's what logstash is picking up okay uh plus you could kind of have another view with which you can identify log spikes across a timeline so for example here we are searching for mds0 mds1 oss0 and oss1 and it's plotting four lines right so it's kind of indicating that hey there was a uh, spike in oss1 logs between 19 you know uh, 1930 and 1940 hours okay Uh, that kind of tells me that maybe something went wrong on oss 1 uh, during that duration right so maybe i want to dig uh, click on that and see the logs log lines of that particular duration for oss 1 okay 
right so this is how you can you know view the actual logs so at the top there is a graph and below you will see all the log lines uh, we have created the columns so that's again based on the parsing right so column 0 is whatever the subsystem column 1 is host etc etc so that's kind of split up into the host names uh, into the column names and i can choose which columns i want to see right so maybe i don't want to see the entire message all i'm interested in is the uh, subsystem the file uh, whatever right? and i can basically just select the columns that i'm interested in and view just those right <clears throat> so i can filter based on the uh, areas of interest and just look at those that part of the data <clears throat> then i can put in multiple search terms like for example i want to see uh, warnings right i want to see warnings across my osss right and i want get want to get an idea that okay i saw uh, about five times more warnings on my on oss 0 than on other osss so maybe something's wrong with oss 0 or something's wrong with the kind of io that happening that's happening on oss 0 so i can get a uh, in that pie chart and even in that stacked area graph i'm able to figure out that okay for a certain search term what's the uh, segregation of it across a bunch of hosts a bunch of nodes right so it's essentially pretty configurable i mean I, we, we, i'm just looking at certain high level things that a typical lusher developer or a lusher administrator might need to look for but it's pretty configurable and you know you could do a bunch of uh, interesting things uh, depending on what your actual problem you're trying to solve is <coughs> like another example is you know let's say i want to uh, all those log lines basically i want to find those logs that are taking more than 2 seconds to enqueue right so essentially i want to search for uh, give me those log lines where ldlm nq took more than 2 seconds right so i can <coughs> kind of uh, write these sort of queries as well uh, within elasticsearch slash kibana <coughs> or once i figure out a certain transaction id that i am want the logs for i can just search for a transaction id by you know writing the particular regular expression x you know the transaction id star right simple regular expression and it will search all the logs because they are kind of indexed in elastic search and give me uh, all the logs pertaining to that transaction id right um, yeah again you can select the columns and you know go through the specifics of that particular rpc right while you debug stuff yeah plus if like i've created a very simple custom graph but essentially you can create any sort of custom graphs and you know create a monitoring dashboard uh, if, if you if especially for administrators so for example uh, the, the the graph that i've created here is very simple it says that what are the number of log lines uh, that are created every five minutes and what i want is the variance every five minutes right so in the first five minutes there are a thousand log lines and in the next five minutes if there are twenty thousand right that means something may have gone wrong right uh, so essentially what we are seeing here is the trend of the number of log lines every five minutes right so in here i just kind of uh, restarted a machine so it led to a recovery and you know a lot more uh, number of log lines than <coughs> you would see in normal operation of a lusher file system right so this is like a simple custom graph that i created you know you could create multiple sorts of bar graphs pie, pie charts uh, trending graphs uh, you can create maps if you want you know if it's relevant so on and so forth <coughs> yeah like another from a developer uh, perspective you know I, I suppose i just want to see uh, all the logs of you know debug mark 0x80 and i want to see uh, the log lines that contain a certain function name right so i can write a very simple search which says you know message dot debug mask should be whatever you know 0x80 and the message dot function that particular field should contain a particular string or a particular function name that will only give me the logs of that uh, pertaining to that uh, what do you say search right so this can be pretty useful for developers especially so that's about it i think you know it's a very as I said, it's a framework, can be leveraged to do various sorts of things. Uh, any questions? So um, I'm guessing that you, you dump the, the Luster kernel debug logs to a file and then import them periodically? 
uh, you can do both so uh, initially that's what we had done uh, but then later on we just call the lctl dk command from within so log, we get logstash to call the lctl dk command and take its output okay do you, do you think it would be worthwhile to implement some sort of direct socket or something like that from the yeah, kernel so that it doesn't debug daemon yeah but that's what lctl dk reads right no no okay so debug daemon is a special extra code in lctl where it actually sits there and reads a special like through a special socket the logs as they come through you just do a bit of interpretation but okay currently it just dumps it into an unparsed file but for your purposes, you will actually need to parse the logs and feed it to your sim. Then, unlike LCTL DK, you don't lose any log records. Right. Okay. Yep. We could easily hook that in. Yeah. While I have this, where do we download your framework? I'm sorry? While I have the microphone, where do we download the framework? Uh, so, most of it's open source. We can probably create a blog and upload the parser and some other steps. I mean, I have put them here, like whatever the steps are there to install these sort of stuff. Right, this but is in the glue, so we need the better yeah. instructions on how to tie it all together. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Is, it, is it possible to do any translations on the, on the messages you get out, say, uh, translating minus 30 into read-only? Yes. Uh, so essentially in the parser you can do many sort of things actually. For example, there is a replace keyword, you know, with which you can say if the subsystem contains 0x80, then replace it with LDLM, uh, those sort of things. Or if you want to do any multiplications, additions, aggregations, aggregations and all would be a bit tough to implement. But yeah, essentially if you want to just do string replacements, uh, remove certain log lines or add some logic of your own during the parsing, you can relatively easily do that. Thank you, Kalpak. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about what's the next steps uh, that DDN is looking at in uh, this area? Uh, it's good to have searching and indexing, uh, very useful. Uh, are you thinking about like maybe automatically detecting anomalies and moving to root cause analysis based on the information in the logs? I think this, those will be very valuable. Uh, right. Because sometimes you don't know what to search for in the beginning. So if you can automatically detect anomalies that can point the administrator to uh, certain keywords. Right. You know, uh, are you thinking of those kind yeah, of searches? So I think features? this will be especially useful. Like, you know, we have a bunch of SFA logs with our hardware, right? So and correlating that, okay, something failed in the hardware and that's what's causing a failure in the file system, that's generally a tough problem to solve and that takes time. So if you could kind of take both logs and correlate those, uh, so again, the, the custom graphs and all that you can create out there is where you can add your correlation logic, right? Which basically says that, okay, uh, <coughs> sorry, from this log, figure out hosts that have so and so keyword and from this log, figure out hosts that have so and so keyword within this five minute time frame and show them together to me, right? And that, suppose that's an error in the SFA log and an error in the Lusher log and that will only happen together if something is going wrong uh, across the stack, right? That's when you'll see a pop-up, right? This is a very useful application and uh, we have spent most of the time analyzing logs and troubleshooting. So do you have difficulties to interpret some message last of messages like this message repeats 100 times so do you need to change format of the messages emitted by cluster itself so suggestion to modify error messages to be more easily interpreted by analyzing tool so do you have suggestions for uh -huh. improving format of error messages produced by cluster uh, so if I understand your question correctly, uh, what you're suggesting is can we identify some messages that are coming in n number of times and notify if they come in a lot? It's, it's just an example. Uh, th there are some error messages which are difficult to interpret. Right. The last message repeats 100 times. <coughs> which one? Right. So do you have troubles to uh, interpret some messages? Uh, so we are not interpreting the complex part yet. I mean, for example, there are some messages, the request ones where there's like three at signs and then you can parse those as well. So we have kind of done a little bit of it. 
uh, but it again kind of depend on what's your requirement so it's all ruby so it you know takes 10 lines of code to write some more complex parsing logic it's relatively yeah, easy to 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 what z if you just emit message in proper format which can be easily interpreted so maybe you can put some requirements what is easy to read uh, yeah so the other point is Suppose your format is extremely complicated, you don't want to parse it, you just want to dump the entire message, that's fine, Elasticsearch is still going to index or I'll be able to search that entire string, you know, even if it's a blob, it's going to be able to uh, search that for you. It, the, the search may not be highly performant because it's not indexed across columns, but it can at least, you know, do better than greps. Right. Yeah. Do you think the luster logs are the right way to grab data like this. I feel like there's much better interfaces that we could improve on and not really use the logs. They're convenient now, but it's a really kludgy interface to get information out of your system. We have a highly distributed system and we're essentially using printf to debug it and that just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Are you interested in improving that or do you feel like it's a it is yes so i think this was started this discussion was started like 6 7 years ago when you know there was plans to improve lusher debugging but i think it's going to be highly incremental uh, it, it must happen it should happen uh, you know there should be more things like brw stats and uh, job stats and you know uh, error stats should be added or some such uh, but i think until that happens, there will always be logs and I think even at that stage, there will be some logs that will require uh, some analysis. But yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have to depend as much as we depend on logs today, right? Eventually, you should be able to pull that into slash sys or proc or some other internal mechanism 